From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, returning your call. Oh, hi, Pat. How's Southern California? My vacation on expense account? I love it. Well, don't overdo it. Just because the Jolly Roger matter interfered with that vacation you'd planned is no Now, wait a minute. You promise. Full expenses. (laughs) Okay. When are you coming back to Hartford? Soon as I clear up the Lamar case. Want okay expenses on it now? Huh? Lamar? Yeah, Pat. This is a case that'll make your hair curl. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lamar matter. Expense account? Ah, oh, forget it. I'm on vacation. As far from Hartford, Connecticut, center of the insurance business as I can get. Yeah, I'm in La Jolla, California. And I'm staying in a big, ritzy motel called El Crescenta. Alone. Oh, there is a girl down here. A lot of them, in fact. But one in particular. Bonnie Lamar, her name is. Sounds like somebody in show business, doesn't it? But she isn't. Tall, five feet eight, brunette, pretty as the devil. And I gave her the line that my so-called business back east consists of nothing more exciting than running a filling station. How can you afford to come all the way out here to California for a vacation? To say nothing of staying at the El Crescenta. Rich uncle, Vonnie. Died and left me a couple of thousand to do with as I see fit. This is the way I see fit. Only a couple of thousand. Mm Mm-hmm. Gee, that's too bad. A couple of hundred thousand, I might really fall for you. Oh, Vonnie, how can you? Hmm? Here I thought these last three days and evenings with you were due solely to my overwhelming personal charms. Your charm has nothing to do with it. Kiss me again, anyhow. With money around, who needed a couple of hundred grand? Yeah, the gal was just about all anyone could ask for. And I don't mean for just a quick vacation time romance. I'd spotted her the minute I'd landed here at this hotel. More like a guest ranch by the seashore. Beautiful, modern cottages set around the big green lawn with a swimming pool in the center big enough for the Olympics. Carports beside the cottages loaded with Eldorados, Continentals, and a handful of foreign sports jobs. And a beautiful big dining room and a building set up to look like an old clipper ship. And food and service worthy of Oscar of the Waldorf. And what was I doing here? On expense account, remember? Yeah, I'd spotted Vonnie the night I arrived from San Diego after clearing up the Jolly Roger matter and set my sights for her immediately. Naturally, I wondered what so attractive a girl was doing alone here. She cleared that up for me at dinner the second night. I still don't understand why Daddy hasn't arrived yet. Oh? He's supposed to join you on this vacation? We always spend our vacations together. At least we have since Mother died a few years ago. You're an only child? Yes. Really, a foster child... Just as we were about to take our plane, some crisis or other arose at the plant. So he made me come along and wait for him. Lamar Metal Products. Lamar Metal... Oh, yeah, yeah. Aircraft components, isn't it? South Bend, Indiana? Yes. You know how crisis can arrive in a business like that. Sure, I imagine so. Government orders, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, you'll probably hear from him before. Oh. Here, waiter, would you like to get us... Senorita, a telegram for the lady. Oh, Excuse me, Johnny. Sure. Here you are, Peter. Gracias, Peter. Oh, dear. What's the matter? It's from my father, and I don't like it. Listen. Must delay departure a few more days. Doctor's orders. Oh? Nothing to worry about. Stay there in La Jolla until I join you, love Daddy. That's too bad. But doctor's orders. There's nothing wrong with Daddy. He had a new insurance examination just a month ago. They gave him a clean bill of health. Uh... What company? 
try mutual something or other, but what difference does it make? There's something wrong about this. I'm sure of it. Well, why don't you phone him? Yes. Yes, I will. My cottage is right next door here. Come on. It was none of my business, but the name of Tri-Mutual rang an old familiar bell. Yeah, I'd handle a lot of cases for them. Anyway, she wasted no time in putting through a call to her father's private number in South Bend. Yes, operator? Thank you. I don't know why I didn't go to my own cottage to make this call. Mm, my pleasure. I guess I'm a bit upset by this wire. I don't blame you. There's nothing wrong with Daddy. There can't be. Well, maybe just made the mistake of mixing too many oysters with too many martinis. Hello? Hello? Daddy, what's this telegram you sent me? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, well, you had me scared for a few minutes. Oh, yes, fine. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> yes, if you must know the truth, I have. Johnny Dollar. Uh oh. Very. Careful, gal. Oh, he says he runs a filling station, but I don't believe him. <laughs> I'll tell you all when you get here. And hurry, darling, please. All right, Daddy. Good night, dear. Oh, thank goodness. You don't know how close your guess was, Johnny. Oh? It was just a slight case of indigestion. Plus the fact he wanted another day at the plant. Well, good. Then let's go back to the dining room and see what kind of indigestion we can accumulate. <laughs> Well, that started it. Three days and nights of as much fun and relaxation as I've had in years. A wonderful place to stay, a private beach that I'll wager is second to none on the Pacific coast. Swimming, water skiing, skin diving, sailing, everything. Oh, this was it. Or so I thought. Oh, why make any bones about it? I'm a sucker for romance. And believe me, it wasn't hard to be serious with money. Johnny. Yeah? This is nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I... I... I don't believe in love at first sight. Do you? Uh, no. No, I, um... But it is nice, isn't it? Hey, whoa, gal. Mm hmm It'd be much too easy to fall in love with you, Vonnie. And I mean the forever kind. Well, would that be so terrible? Well, you've, you've got one big strike against you, you know. Johnny, what? M-O-N-E-Y, <laughs> money. <laughs> you lose. Huh? I have nothing, except what my father gives me. You know, allowance and for clothes and things. and <laughs> You know. So you see, I'm just as poor as you are. Only you aren't. Or you wouldn't be staying at a place like this. Another thing. You know absolutely nothing about me. I know you don't make a living by running any old filling station. Johnny Dollar at the sign of the Flying Red Horse. Oh, stop it. Well, for all you know, I'm a... I'm a gangster, or a safecracker, a jewel thief. Mm. Or worse still, playboy scion of a wealthy family who never did a lick of work in his life. In other words, a worthless bum. Don't say that, Johnny, even in fun. Had you fill them, huh? Yes, and their mother's. Old dowagers trying to marry them off to another wealthy family. Add the name Lamar to their end of the social register listing. Ensure the fortune with another fortune. I thought you said you were poor. Well, you know what I mean. A bunch of worthless fops, that's all they are. I've seen better men among the servants and chauffeurs, the little Mexican boy who helps one of the gardeners, and the young businessmen there in South Bend and in other cities. Maybe earning just enough to make ends meet, but but men, ambitious, hardworking, willing to get somewhere on their own merit, and well, you know what I mean. Mm hmm. Why don't you marry one of them, Bonnie? Oh, it isn't as easy as that, Johnny. You know it. Maybe I was waiting for someone like you to. Mm. I still don't believe in love at first sight. Hmm. Good. Well, let me snuggle again. Like before we started this horrible discussion. Mm hmm. The sun's going down, though, honey. And this little niche in the rocks is going to get cold. Yeah, look. 
Everybody else has left the beach. I'm snuggle, I like it. <laughs> Kiss me. And I thought I'd have to ask for it. John, Johnny, what do you do? Well, hmm? Well, I'll tell you. I live in Hartford, as I told you, and Wait. I'm really. Listen. He's calling you. Yeah, you too. Oh, the spoil sport. Well, maybe it's word from your dad. Here, up you come. Oh, I hope so. Come on, Johnny. Pedro? Pedro? Over here. Here we are. Here. What's up? Oh, senor, senorita. Telegrams. Telegrams? But the one for the senor was Mark Rush. So I rush. Good boy, Pedro. Here. No, I'll tip you when we get back to the motel. Si, Stop senor. by my cottage. But Johnny, it's... It's... What's wrong, Bonnie? It's from our family doctor. I'm afraid... Here, you read it. Sure, I'll be glad to. Regret having to inform you... Your father died a few hours ago. <laughs> Suggest you return to South Bend immediately. Oh, Johnny! <laughs> It was a few minutes before Bonnie could pull herself together enough to walk from the beach up to her cottage where she could pack her things for the trip back to South Bend. I told her I'd make the necessary plane reservations for her. But what I didn't tell her was the contents of the wire I'd received, the one marked Rush. It was from Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. A request to call him at his home in Hartford immediately. I put through the call. Hello, Pat McCracken. Well, Killjoy, what's on your mind? Johnny? That's right. Hey, you got my wire. Why else do you think I'm calling? I tried to get you long distance all day. Your motel didn't seem to know where you were. Well, that was my doing. They might have spoiled a beautiful romance. But what's on your mind? Uh, Johnny, you've got to cut your vacation short. Oh, no, you don't. And you've got to come back to Hartford right away. What? Now, listen, I'm just... Yes, but plan to make a long stopover in South Bend, Indiana. South Bend? That's right. Oh, I get it. This is a gag. Or did you know I'd figured maybe on stopping over there anyhow? No, I don't know what you're talking about, but now listen. By a rare stroke of luck, we just got word of the death this morning of one of Trimutual's bigger policyholders. How much? A million and a half. <sighs> man named Thomas Rene Lamar. Lamar? Pat! Now listen, Johnny. The circumstances lead us to think it may be murder. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a set of circumstances arise that are enough to keep a man from trusting even himself. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>